Bum, bada, dum. Howdy, y'all. Banjo Ben here. We're going to do a build a break lesson today for the old classic You Are My Sunshine, which sounds like a happy song, but I promise you it is not. Now, if you've never done a build a break lesson with me before, let me tell you a bit about what they are and then I'll play it for you. But we're going to start with a very basic melody and then we'll play two more solos that add more and more complex things, adding rolls, adding licks. Point of these lessons is for you to learn how to build your own breaks. I'll tell you more about that later. But let me jump back there on the set. I'm going to play it through three times. Make sure you stick around and listen to all three of those. And then we'll learn not only how to play those, but how to build your own breaks. That was fun, wasn't it? Okay, anybody can benefit from this lesson because as I mentioned, the point is for you not to learn exactly what I played, though you can, I have the tabs for it. The point is for you to go through the process with me so that you learn how to hear a melody and then you learn how to make that melody into rolls and then you learn how to grab some banjo licks and throw it in there to spice it up a little bit. If you're watching somewhere like YouTube or Facebook, I'd love to have you over on the website, banjobenclark.com. If you join as a Gold Pick member over there, you get access to hundreds of banjo lessons, lots of other builder breaks, lots of other types of lessons, theory, technique, all that good stuff. And then I have tons of lessons on guitar and a mandolin as well, including You Are My Sunshine. So I'd be honored to have you come over and check it out. Let's jump into this basic melody for You Are My Sunshine. The foundation for all good banjo solos is the melody. And if we don't know the melody to a song, we don't have anything to build upon. That's what a foundation's for, right? So I know that you're wanting to perhaps skip ahead and learn the more intermediate breaks for this, but hang with me here in the melody and let's make sure we have a grasp on it so that you can build from there. Let's pull up the tab here. You'll notice that I have the lyrics beneath each one of the notes and the only notes on the page there, the only notes on the tab are the actual melody notes that we're going to sing. A couple things to pay attention to. We're in 4-4 timing. So each measure has four beats. And you'll also notice that every um, each note on this line is either a quarter note, which gets one beat, or a half note, which gets two beats. So there's no syncopated melodies. It makes it pretty easy for us to communicate this melody as we start adding rolls. You'll also notice that in measures 1, 3, and 5, the lyrics come in on the second beat of the measure. So it's important to understand the counting there. So if I were to give you one measure of count in and then we begin singing, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four, one. You are my sunshine. Okay, coming in on the second beat. So how about you try to play along with me or at least shadow me as I play the, through this first line. One, two, three, four, one. You are my sunshine. One, my only sunshine. One, you make me. Now let's go to the next line. It's just important for you to get a grasp on this. You don't have to memorize it. We now go to a C chord, but we don't need the full C chord to grab our melody notes. So let's play our index finger on the first fret and our ring finger on the second fret. We're doing that so that our middle finger's free to play other strings in here if we need. Those are two half notes. Happy. Measure eight. That note takes up the whole measure. It's called a whole note for that reason. And then we come in on the second beat of measure nine. 
Let's play this whole line together. One, two, ready, go. Happy one. When skies are gray. Two, three, four, one. You'll never. Then we have some repeating. Look at the next line. Same line, almost till the very end. No, dear, how much I made you. One, two. This time, measure 13. We wait till the third beat to come in. One, two. Please don't, please don't. Then the final line is a little bit different. And I do have one extra note in here, measure 14, that's technically not part of the singing melody, but I just put it in there because I felt like I wanted to hear it. They my sun shine away. Then what you see in measure 17 are the pickup notes for the rest, or for the next solo, which also comes in on the second beat. So here's what I want you to do. Before you move on, I want you to play through this tab a few times, and then come off the tab, sing the song, and see if you can play the same notes that you can sing at the same time. See if you can work that out. That's very important, y'all, if you want to learn how to play solo banjo and not be dependent on these tabs. In fact, let's wipe the tab, and you and I are going to try it together, singing and playing the melody notes. One, two, three, four, one. Let me say something else before we go on. All we're doing is using open strings, the second fret here, the first fret here, and the second fret here. Those are the only notes that we're having to fret. That really narrows it down for us, doesn't it? That we only have open strings and these three frets. So you should be able to guess and have a pretty doggone high probability of hitting the right melody note. Okay, let's try it together. One, two, three, four, one. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Do that again. Okay. So I would encourage you to be able to, with a pretty high percentage of success, play through that basic melody with me singing it if you can, but knowing where those notes are, okay? And for the most part, being able to guess where they're going and then learning that, you know, memorizing that, not off a tab, but off of what you discover with your ear and your voice. At that point, we can move ahead to a solo where we're going to add some rolls and fill in some of these spaces. Let's now add some rolls, and primarily we're going to use the forward roll. That's the most natural roll for us to start adding in whenever we're beginning to complement and build out a basic uh, melody. And I want to give you some tips about these forward rolls for how to fit them in. So we've done our little pickup notes. You've already learned that. So now we're coming in on measure 18 on sunshine. Now, do you remember here, looking at the tab, do you remember where the melody note is? It's right here on the second string. Sunshine. And then the next measure goes, my only sunshine. So it's great practice for you to look through this line of tab that I have before you and pick up where the melody notes are. Now, the melody notes might not fall exactly where they did before, but they're going to be included for the most part, okay? So, for instance, in measure 18, the melody notes were sunshine. Well, we're going to start a forward roll that's going to keep throwing that melody note at you. So we're going to play it one time as a quarter note, and then we're going to start a forward roll pattern on the second beat with that index finger into our next measure. Here's a little tip that I wanted to give you. A lot of times it's helpful when we're building breaks and we, we play a melody note that's at the start of a measure, like measure 18 or measure 20. If we let that be a quarter note and then start the roll, a forward roll, and if we start it with the same finger that we just played, that 
Forward roll will take us to that same finger at the start of the next measure. Look there at the second beat of measure 18. It's an index finger. Look at the first beat of 19. It's an index finger. Look at measure 20. We start the forward roll with the thumb with the G string. It takes us back around to the G string in measure 21. Or sh I should say, it doesn't take you around to the same finger, but it will take you around to the same string. And that's just helpful. It establishes a little bit of regularity. Because a lot of times when we start playing these banjo rolls, we can, we can get lost. But we know if we start with a quarter note and then, and then do a forward roll for the rest of the measure, that the third time we come back around to that string, it's the next measure, okay? Now when we get to measure 19, we're going back to that basic melody. And because this melody repeats a lot, you know, it has two notes in a row. Sunshine, my only sunshine. These forward rolls work great for that because the roll is incorporating the melody note. I threw a pinch on the second beat of 21 just to throw in something a little bit different. So let's try to play this whole line together. One, two, ready, go. Okay. It's important that we hear our melody in there. I know it's not exactly as we would sing it, but the notes are there and contained inside those forward rolls. Let's try the same thing, next measure. What's different about our me melody this time though? Our melody doesn't stay on the same note. He goes, happy. Okay, well, what if I just make a partial C chord here and we do the forward roll with those notes? It's going to include both melody notes, both right here and the melody note that we saw here. Okay, so that's gonna work great. And then we can walk back down just like we did in the basic me melody. Now check out measure 24. <clears throat> I start here with the melody note, but I don't start my forward roll with the same finger. I start my forward roll with my thumb, which is what we'll often do. And what, what is the principle we learned earlier? If we start a forward roll on the second beat, it will come back around to that string on the first note of the next, first beat of the next measure. Okay, so it's important to, to just notice that we don't have a lot of melody to cover here, right? When skies are gray. And then that melody note just holds out gray. And we really don't pick up more melody notes until the end of 25, which we have there. Okay, let's try this line. Two, ready, go. This time we'll go to the C chord, even though the melody in measure 26 is the same, I'm going to give you a little bit different trick because I don't want you to always fall into a pattern of playing a melody note and then starting a forward roll. We can delay it. And in fact, the faster that you play, the better it is to add space and add quarter notes in. That's what we're going to do here. Instead of starting the roll immediately, we're going to go up to the melody note and play a quarter note. And it's a little bit early from what you would sing it. You'll never know, dear, instead of you'll never know, dear. And that's okay. <clears throat> we have the liberty on our instruments to grab those melody notes and scoot them in time. Either play them a little bit earlier than what you would sing or a little bit later than what you would sing. But as long as they're there, the listener's ear is going to gravitate towards them. They're waiting to hear the melody. We're just serving it to them a little bit early. And that's, that's where the fun stuff comes in. This time in 28, I moved away from the forward roll just to give us some variety. We're going to do the square roll. Okay. But we're going to abbreviate the first half of the square roll. Just let it be an open B string. Pick up the back half of it on the second beat. Then do a full square roll. Then another pinch. Okay, so let's try playing this whole line.
last line, I'm going to do something even different just to give you some variety. Instead of starting with a quarter note, I'm just going to let a forward roll run through two measures. It's a lot of fun. And it happens to work out that we can follow our melody notes. Do you remember what the melody does? This is why it's important. Please don't take my sunshine away. Those melody notes are there in those three first three measures. But we're just going to change the melody notes as with the middle note of that forward roll. So it sounds like this. Another square roll, and then another pickup to our next solo. Notice that I jumped up at the start of measure 31 and grabbed that G string, that third string, with my thumb, with my right hand, even though we've been playing our index finger there. I'm of the opinion that every time we can use our thumb, we should try. Okay, so <clears throat> you can try that, or you can use your index finger there. Let's play it one more time. Ready, go. How about we try playing the whole um, break together slowly? One, two, ready, go. I had to accent my melody notes lo uh, louder than the others. And we're also playing it with a very straight time. Whereas whenever I play it a little faster, I'll put some swing in there. So instead of this, you'll hear a little bit of gallop. And it sounds better to have that gallop in there as long as you can do it both ways. That's the main thing I always try to point out is that we don't want to be trapped in only playing straight or only playing with a swing. Be sure that you can do both. Okay, let's look at the next break where we're going to add some licks. Let's take what we've learned and now add what I call ornaments, which are slides or hammer-ons or pull-offs. We're going to do, I think, maybe one pull-off, a couple pull-offs and maybe one hammer-on, but mostly the slides. And then we're going to throw some licks in because this is where it gets really fun when we know licks like the G lick. <laughs> that happen to work well to convey the melody and fill in the space. Okay, so as we look at measure 34, it's important to know what was my mel melody doing. Sunshine. So whenever that melody is an open string, and if you've watched my Builder Breaks before, you know what I'm about to say. I love to start on the string below it and, and slide into that note. So I'm gonna start actually on the second fret of the string beneath it and I'm gonna slide up to the note that's the melody while I play the next string that is the melody note. And that's a 16th note slide that you're seeing there. So I'm actually going to do that slide a little bit earlier or a little bit faster than what I'm going to pick the next note. So instead of arriving there at the same time, which would be fine, I'm gonna do a little faster. So that whenever you're playing at a faster tempo, you can really hear that. Another thing that I'll often do is bend the string a little bit as I slide. So I'm not going to slide straight up. I'm going to do kind of a moon shape. So you're going to get a bit of a bend sound along with the slide. It sounds horrible slow. But when you're going faster, it gets some of that bluegrass sound, some of that Earl Scruggs sound. right? Okay. You'll also notice that we're not doing a bunch of uh, chains of rolls like we did before. That's because it actually sounds better to not do a bunch of rolls connected. A lot of times a beginner, even intermediate players, 
They think they've got to fill all the space with rolls. You do not. It sounds better to do parts of rolls and then throw in slides and hammer-ons and licks, quarter notes, rest, silence, all that stuff. That's part of learning how to play um, to, with a little taste to your level. Okay, so I'm just doing essentially like two little rolls here. <laughs> And as I land there, you are my sunshine. That melody note is two G notes in a row. Sunshine. I know I've got a good full you know, measure and a half here to, to fill up. Well, I'm going to take that opportunity to play one of my favorite licks. So here we're going to play the G lick. And then instead of walking up at the end, I'm going to use a slide to convey the same idea. Just a slide with a forward roll like we had in the very start. The whole line, slowly. Two, ready, go. If you don't make it all the way to the fourth fret, it's okay. I, sometimes, half the time I don't. I just go to the third fret. I put the fourth fret in there because it's... It's a noble thing to reach for that fourth fret on some slides. Now, as we go to the next line, our melody is going. This time, if you'll remember, before we got there a little early, we went. This time, we're going to delay it. You'll notice that this melody note, we're not actually going to get to it until the fourth beat of this measure. I did that on purpose to show you that we can also delay the melody. Okay? And if we just look at what's happening at the top, forget about the fifth string, it does this. So we're going to play for the first time a note that's outside of the scale, right there. It sounds bad if you're going slow, but it resolves up to that melody note. And I'd like for you to just practice that without doing the pinches. And when you do play that second fret, I want you to do it with your ring finger so that we can go back into that C position and measure 39. Now we're going to add a pinch on the second and fourth beats. It's just a, just a little you know, fun thing that I included in here that you can maybe use somewhere else. And the faster you're going, the better and tastier that sounds because it offers some movement, it's something outside the scale, and it's not too busy. And once we get to that C chord, oh, sorry. Now we do a forward roll. Following that melody, right? Measure 40, the melody's here. We're going to use a lick. So I'm going to do a slide, and at the same time, throw my second finger down up here. Yes, they touch at the same time, even if for just a little while. I also like to bend that little slide there. The whole line. One, two, ready, go. We already know this. Now I'm going to give you something a little different. This time when we go to the C, what is our melody? This time, I'm going to delay it a little bit, and we're going to do a hammer-on on the first string. Check this out, measure 42. Oh, I didn't do it very well. Cool, pretty cool little lick there, isn't it? A couple things I want you to watch for. This hammer-on is not a 16th note hammer-on. It's an eighth note, so it doesn't happen any faster than the rest of the eighth notes that we've been rolling. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then in 43, I jump up and I grab that second string with my thumb because I like to do that whenever I can. Those two measures. Then a lick we've already seen. 
Then we have a little hammer on on the bottom. That's just another way to communicate the mel melody, right? Because the melody goes boom, boom, boom. Well, I just threw a hammer on in there just to bring another note in. It's not in the melody, but it helps the melody climb. A whole line. One, two, ready, go. Last line, we start with our forward roll slide that we already know. Then we're going to do a couple pinches. All that is, is the melody's here. We just put some harmony notes on the top. Okay, and then a little funky lick here in measure 47. It's got a bit of a syncopated feel to it. What I want you to do is just Go to the pull-off first. We're going to be pulling off with our ring finger this time because we had to put down our middle finger on the second fret. So we're going to do this. Just practice this with me. We play it with our thumb, the pull-off with our thumb. And then we play our index, then our thumb. Just practice that till you get it. If you don't get the pull-off clean, that's okay. It'll get cleaner. Now I'm going to back up and play that open D string with it. Sounds like this. Now put it all together. So fun. And then our G run. So that whole line together sounds like this. One, two, ready, go. Let's play the whole solo together. Starting measure 34. One, two, ready, go. invite you to get that basic melody down and then forget the tabs, go to the rhythm tracks and just play through it a bunch with the rhythm tracks playing that basic melody and then try adding your, your own rolls. If you get lost, that's okay. It'll come back around and then try adding your own licks. But put this philosophy into practice. Don't just spend all your time trying to memorize and learn the tab that I've given you. Those are just communicative tools, communicative tools for the philosophy of building a break. I hope that you enjoyed this one.